All right, we're back with question number four, supply and demand. And you can see I'm really pounding away here at supply and demand because it's just important you get real practice in shifting these curves based on the fact of being changed in the particular market here. So let's go to number four. And it starts out like this. Suppose the incomes of buyers in a market for a particular normal good decrease. In other words, the incomes of individuals, consumers in this particular market go down and this is a normal good. All right? And there was also a reduction in input prices. What would you expect to occur in this market? Again, let's stop for a second. We have decreases in income and it's a normal good. A normal good means what? It means that if you increase income, the demand for that good shifts out. And if you decrease income, demand for that good shifts in. All right. So now it says the, the income of these buyers has for of this particular good have decreased. So the incomes have fallen. It's a normal good. That's going to push the demand curve in. And there's also a reduction in input prices. All right. Well, input prices means that the supply curve is going to shift out. So let me draw it just to be clear that we're on the same page here. And let me take it one at a time. We'll put quantity, excuse me, quantity of, I think we have good, and we have price of the good, and we have a demand curve like this, and we have a supply curve like this. Very typical what we've been doing here. So we're going to call this D0, we're going to call this S0. And now they say, let's take them one at a time. It says it's a normal good, but people's income have fallen. Well, if incomes fall and it's a normal good, the demand for that good is going to shift in. So this is our demand curve, D1. It's shifting in because it's a normal good and incomes have fallen here. And the second change is that it says that input prices have also fallen. So input prices affect the supply curve. And because they've fallen, it becomes cheaper at every point to produce this particular good. That's going to cause our supply curve to shift out from S0 to S1. All right? So now. If I had the original equilibrium was right here at E0, and this was equilibrium price, at P0, and this is equilibrium quantity, at Q0, question is, where are we now? Where are we? We're right here at this red dot. That's equilibrium one after our two changes. And what has happened? Well, price. Looks like it's certainly fallen. And equilibrium quantity, well, it's kind of in, the word's going to be ambiguous again. All right? So now that you've drawn things, you should say to yourself, well, we've got the demand curve shifting in, which puts downward pressure on price and downward pressure in equilibrium quantity. But the supply curve is shifting out. That also puts downward pressure on price, but it pushes equilibrium quantity out. So we're going to get an ambiguous result for quantity but price is unambiguously falling. Let's see what chance he gives us the best. It says the equilibrium price would increase. Well, immediately A is gone. There's no way these two shifts are going to increase price. So we're out, we're out of A immediately. The equilibrium price would decrease. That's correct. But the impact on the amount sold in the market would be ambiguous. That's correct. All right. Again, forces of the decrease in demand and increase in supply are both putting price downward pressure on price. And yet, they're offsetting as far as equilibrium quantity is concerned. So B is going to be our answer, but let's keep going. Both equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity would increase. No way, Jose, right? We know that this price is unambiguously falling, so you can immediately get rid of C. And D, equilibrium quantity would increase. Nope. But the, the impact of equilibrium price would be ambiguous. So even if you, if you drew it so that equilibrium quantity increased, there's no way that the equilibrium um, impact or the new equilibrium for price is going to be higher. It's got to be lower. So D is out. And the answer is clearly A. Again, good question. Force you to draw the curves. Force you to shift the curves based on what's going on here. The little wrinkle here, remember, was that we had a normal good. And a normal good means that when incomes rise, demand for that good rises. When income falls, demand for that good falls. We are in a recession or have been in a recession for a while now. Therefore, incomes are falling, and demands for normal goods is falling as well. So that's kind of an important concept, so hold on to that one. All right, we're done number four. We will stop here. We'll go to number five, take a break, come back, and we'll walk through it.